Oh hey, if you love stories of drama, suspense, and accidental poisonings, you're gonna love this very special episode of Behind the Sofa. Y'all, we are back, back, back again. But today is not a standard episode of Laugh Cry DIY. Today, we are gonna talk about a project that I actually did before I started my channel. Guys, we don't plan this, we don't practice it, she just does it. So today, I'm gonna tell you the story of how I custom dyed my dream color of sofa in my own bathtub. And although I did not film it, I do have photographic evidence. So I thought, why don't we have a relaxing chat? I'll talk you through the process. I'll show you the pics. And maybe, just maybe, if you wanna do the same thing, you will be inspired to do it as well. We gotta change a camera angle. So let's dive into the origin story of this incredible sofa. I used to live in a studio apartment a tiny studio apartment. I lived in studio apartments for seven years. My old studio was so tiny, it fit a bed and it fit the world's microest love seat. Like I could not have a full size sofa. And my dream in life was to one, live in a one bedroom and two, have a full size sofa. It took me over a year of looking because everything is insane. The prices are crazy. And I finally found a place. And once I found a place, I realized, oh my God, I get to have the sofa of my dreams. And for me, that vision was I wanted a flamingo pink sofa. Sounds simple, but my vision of flamingo pink was very specific. It was not millennial pink. It was not hot pink. It was not bubblegum pink. It was a very specific, almost like coral bright pop pink. And I was obsessed with this idea. Unfortunately, dun dun dun, it did not exist. I think we can all agree sofa shopping next to maybe childbirth is the most difficult and challenging and hardest thing a human can ever go through because everything is online. You cannot tell the color. You cannot feel like the vibe, not to mention the fact that it is so expensive. And at the time I was looking for my coral pink sofa, I could not find any company making the color I wanted. When you're a cheap whore, you will always find a way. So I started to think if I can't find the sofa I want, could I create the sofa I want? And then I found a post by the person who I will forever be indebted to for inspiring this project. And that is Chris from Melodrama. I will tag her below. I will link her instructional post. She has a beautiful home. She also wanted a pink sofa. And she figured out that what she could do is get a sofa cover for her Ikea couch and custom dye that. And so that is exactly what I did. Now folks, what we're looking at here is a three-seater Karlstad sofa from Ikea. Karlstad is, in my opinion, their best sofa they've ever created. It's so versatile, you can swap out the legs, you can dress her up, dress her down, throw a blazer on her, take her from day to night. But there's only one problem, it's discontinued. And of course, I found out it was discontinued, I was devastated, fell to my knees, cursed the heavens, and then I realized I can probably get one off Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, so I got this bad boy for $50. Let me tell you the other thing about this amazing big couch. I transported the entire thing broken down in my Prius. I was able to stack it in, and somehow, how could I transport an entire three-seater couch in my Prius? Only God knows. I bought the couch for $50, I got it home, and then I realized, Okay, I just need to buy a sofa cover for it. Fortunately, the good internet delivered, and I did find a seller on eBay selling a plain white cotton cover for this. Now, that said, there are also companies that make custom IKEA covers. BEMS is one, um, I think Comfortly is one, I'll link a few of those below. And they all still do make covers for the Karlstad. But when you're an individual gal, you know, a one of one, you really want your own custom color. Now here was the thrill and challenge of this project. I knew what custom color I wanted. I did not know how to actually make that color. Fortunately, Rit Dye on their website has a massive basically recipe chart of how you can achieve certain colors, but I was still terrified. I didn't know how much I would need. So step one, I went to the craft store and I balled out on Rit Dye. And this is the series of colors I got. I didn't even actually know myself exactly what color I wanted. So that's why I just picked up a whole bunch of different ones, hoping I could kind of mix and match in the dye bath. Step two, I taped my tub up with plastic liners like crazy. Fun fact, it still ripped and split through and I sure did dye my tub and I spent three days cleaning it out. So basically I started filling my tub with boiling water. This was psychotic. I had to boil 
vats and vats of water on all four burners, drag them over to my bathtub because for the dye to take, you need it to be very, very hot. And I did not open my bathroom window because I didn't want it to lose heat and steam, which meant that I was just inhaling a steaming wet bath of dye. Not a great idea. But so basically I created this color mix and then I read that one way to test color is to just dunk a white paper towel in it and that'll give you a sense of how it's coming out. Now in my opinion, working with dye is so challenging and deceptive because it will like look like a blood red witch's bath. And then if you actually put in like a test swatch of fabric, it'll be like the lightest, daintiest pastel pink. So I made my little brew, dunked my paper towel and it was looking great. And so I did the very brave thing and I submerged my entire white sofa cover into the witch's brew. And I kept an eye on it and it was turning the exact flamingo pink color that I had always wanted in my heart. So naturally I was thrilled and I was like, let's keep her in there a little bit longer just so that she really accepts the dye. And then I took her out. And then of course, moment of hell, because the color it turned is what I can only describe as neon red. So I saw that and I was horrified but this had also happened to Chris, and in her post, she pointed out that Rit makes a product called Color Remover. So I rushed to the store, got it all, brought it back, and then redid the process of filling up the bath with boiling hot water, tubs and tubs and tubs, like full Cinderella mode. So I threw everything back in, swished it around, and slowly but surely, it did start to strip the dye out. Now I didn't want to strip it all the way out and start over from scratch because I was worried the same thing would just happen and I just didn't emotionally have it in me to like try again. So I just thought, what if we can lighten it, lighten it and see how it goes. So I got it to a place where I felt comfortable pulling it out. So I had to take it down to my windowless basement laundry room, wash it out and I was still very suspect on what the hell color it was because basement lighting with no windows. But then when I took it out into the bright, beautiful sunlight, I saw that it was actually pink. Now it did look a little bit bubblegum pink, but at that point I was defeated, I was devastated, I had no more fight in me, so I would just take whatever was there. But then it dried, and like a magic spell, it lightened as it dried, and it became my absolute, absolute dream color. Now it turns out that the color I was basically after the whole time was Pantone's color of the year in 2019, <gasps> Living Coral. So really it was a coral pink I was after, not a flamingo pink but who even cares? So I got her on, I swapped out the original sofa legs for something more clean and mid-century. And that was four years ago. And here I stand today with the couch that I love so much. It is an absolute say something couch. When people walk in, um, they're stunned, their jaw is dropped, they can't believe it. No one's ever seen anything as incredible. Now let's talk pros and cons of doing this yourself. Number one, pro, saving so much money. I think in total, I probably spent about $350. Another pro, because it's all like a slip cover, washable, I can take it off and wash it. Now I'll talk about the cons or rather things I wish I would have done differently. I wish that I would have treated it with like some sort of like color setter or like color protector and or scotch guard because because it's a lighter color it does pick up stains and for the most part i've gotten out most of them but i do wish that i had been able to preserve the color a little bit more because it has lightly faded over the years and then also because i basically spent two days straight in my bathtub boiling dying inhaling fumes inhaling color remover all that stuff i did have a headache and i felt nauseous for 24 hours after but if the price of the sofa of my dreams is 24 hours of sickness, that's still a deal. Let me tell you the best and worst part of this perfect, beautiful, stunning color. The best part is that it is actually the color of Baguette's little nose and her paws. You wanna show them? The worst part of this color is that it is possibly the hardest color I've ever had to work with when it comes to design but I did it to myself and I accept full responsibility. So you guys, that is the story of my couch. I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry I didn't live film it, but I didn't have a YouTube channel yet. If you guys want more videos where I just like sit and chat, talk about some stuff, let me know. And in the meantime, come back next week to see the very exciting, very special DIY that is going to go with this sofa. All right, love you babes, bye.